It ain't worth it to me. Is Flower and Garden better the second time? Purchase the bear here. We're at Epcot today because the menus have changed at Epcot's Flower and Garden. It's your number one choice in foodie infotainment. We got to find out if it's still any good. But remember, she's vegan. I'm not. Let's go dance in the flowers. Happy Easter. You heard the girl. I'll take strawberry. Okay. Okay, my grape for her. I'll take the grape for him. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really excited for this. I've never had this flavor before. This is the third or fourth Uncrustable I've ever had in my life. And they've all been on this channel. So I'm really excited. You can get this at the PB and J Garden. Sometimes there's cast members out just handing this out. And they've done that in that area for years. I remember when they had like cranberry stomping over there. It's the perfect ratio of peanut butter and jelly. I absolutely love this. I love the strawberry. It's a five out of five. Kids love it. Adults love it. It makes me miss Halloween Horror Nights when they were fried, but it's fine. I still love it. And they are giving these out completely free. Uh, they've been doing this since the beginning of the festival. The first couple of days they were like hit and miss, so we missed them giving them out, but I'm glad that we actually got a chance to try them now. Yes, they're just Uncrustables, but when Disney gives you something away free, you should probably take advantage of that while you can, because it's not always going to be that way. Proper ratio, peanut butter on both sides, jelly in the middle, as it should be. Almost a little bit too much jelly for me, but they're okay. Now they're in the little freezer box that are semi-frozen to frozen. You just grab one and throw it in your backpack for the day. You can eat them later. Pre-sealed snack, full free. Free makes things taste better, trust me. Three and a half out of five claws. Our original friend, the grape jelly with the peanut butter. This is your second choice. You have the option to pick which one. There's two of us, so we each pick one, but you only get one. Consistently delicious. I'm not a jams or jellies person, but I love Uncrustables. Also a five out of five princess these item. Kids and adults will love it. I need to know from the community, because these questions always come up, which do you prefer? Strawberry or grape? Or is there some other flavor that you prefer in your PB&J? Leave that fruit as an emoji in the comments below. I'm a sucker for a good PB&J. That's like my go-to lazy snack. It's a simple PB&J. I'm perfectly happy with that. Nostalgia, flavor, simple, filling. It's four to five balls. Terramana, it's nice and light. It's a little heavy on that blood orange taste, but I like that flavor. It's like nice and tart. I would give it a 3.75 out of 5 margaritas. It's really tasty. The blood orange margarita, Terramana in it. Uh, the rock style, the nice little burnt orange. That's a nice touch, rather than normal limes and lemon and everything else. I get on board with that. It smells like blood orange. Blood orange is a weird, like really tart flavor for a margarita, so maybe it'll bounce out the sweet. Sort of sweet and sour than margaritas already are. Mm. That is way more sugary and syrupy than I was expecting out of something called blood orange. The premix ones are always a mixed bag. You either get something that's like blended and flavorous, or you get something that's super sugary and like that. You took what could have been a very good margarita and you just made it juicy juice. It's pretty. But it don't taste that great. Two and five points. But we commit to our mistakes. Here we have Connection Eatery's specialty sandwich for Flower and Garden. A hot honey chicken sandwich, which is a curious choice because at Honey Bistro you can get chicken and waffles with a hot honey syrup on top of that. So you have a hot honey there and a hot honey here. Now, I didn't think the one at the Honey Bistro was all that spicy. I thought it was kind of like, eh. Let's see if this one's any better. This one is actually spicy, and you get a lot more of the honey punch in this than you ever would at Honey Bistro. Like, it's like a front of the tongue spice, maybe like a three out of 10 on the heat scale, but like, it's heat and flavor. 
traditionally married chicken. The pickles with the slaw, nice pairing. Uh, this is a chicken sandwich worthy of being called a chicken sandwich. Chicken and waffles at the Honey Bistro have been meh execution wise. They just put this in Honey Bistro. I really don't understand why it's a connection, but I'm glad it's here. Four out of five claws. And we have the side that came with the hot honey chicken sandwich. I could have gotten french fries, which I did much want, or I could have got a cuties, like a mandarin orange. I'm a slaw person. If they don't mess it up. This already looks very, very mayo-y, and I don't love very mayo-y slaw. It could have been a bad scoop, but it's like right on the edge. Two out of five claws. Though it's not in the booklet, it is probably my favorite beverage at Flower and Garden this year. And every one comes with its own little unique flower like we all are, and it comes from Living with the Land. I'm here for all these new things that have pieces from Living with the Land. That's so nice and peachy and perfect. I love it. It's a five out of five. It's a Princess City's item. I recommend this drink if you come during Flower and Garden at any point. Smash in the day with a nice sip of peach smash. You really can't underestimate the little side boots and carts during festivals because they hide things. This is one of the hidden things. Get this. Don't waste money on festival drinks. We have these unique festival drinks that are actually a full-size cup and actually in most cases a little bit better tasting. Put them about peach and whiskey. These go so well together. This it's floral, got a nice little kick to it, representing Canada. You know, can't go wrong with this. Four and a half out of five claws. This is by far my favorite drink at the festival so far. Now here we have a beautiful dry cider. We've had this before when we sat inside the crepe stand here at Epcot. It is vegan and always available, so you can get it inside or outside. We recommend getting a table inside because it's always dead. It's so nice. It's so rich. It's like deeper than um, sparkling apple cider. I'm here for it. I give it a 4.75 out of 5 ciders. This is a hidden secret at Epcot. So a cider served in this... Uh champagne flute so it's like seven bucks eight bucks like half the price i guess if you got like in a full size cup you just give me the cup though or offer me a bigger size because this is a little bit more than a sip for a bear and then when you give me a glass like this i'm forced to go pink these up it's like a habit can't like it won't go back in i appreciate this is like a super sweet cider i can see where they get the dry from but like not dry as in the wine, but like drier than like your normal cider. I go on board for this. This just proves sometimes you just gotta wander away from the festival. We get distracted very easily during these videos sometimes because the best things are usually back in the pavilions. Come off World Showcase. I know that it's easy to just walk in a circle all day. But explore the pavilions, you will find a plethora of very nice things. It's one of those. Four to five plus. Now this is a Cronenberg. This is one of Bear's favorites. We've had this many times before in the past. Cheers to all of our flower garden friends. It's nice. It's light. It's like a light hop. It's good for like beginner beer drinkers. It's definitely better than a Bud Light. I would give it a 4 out of 5 yeasties. It's a very delicious beer. I consider Cronenberg and the Cronenberg 64, which is what this is, these what I call gateway beers. Once you step outside the regular, commercially available things that you can get in your average gas station, and you start tasting things like this, you start to realize there's a whole world of beers. Literally, a whole world showcase of beers that uh, you're missing out on. And sometimes, you just gotta try something a little bit different. 
This is like a half a step up. Start here and then keep going. It's almost like liquid banana bread. Nice and smooth and crisp with some layers of complexity to it. It's a little bit bitter on the back end, but nothing that's gonna say like, scrape your tonsils with sandpaper bitter. Four to five plus. I'm not calling this a beef patty. I'm calling it a crispy empanada because it's, that's what it's giving. That's what it's always given. This one's really hard. You can see what it looks like on the inside. So delicious looking and flavorful, super packed. This is one of the few things where I'm just not into the bread. The wrapper is really like what brings the dish down. Everything else is amazing. I love like the spice of the papaya sauce, the seasoning of the impossible. It's all really delicious. I'm gonna give it a four out of five empanadas. It's a wonton empanada. There's one thing you can't say about this is it is not a mountain. Because this is definitely that. And this hard, flaky, like this isn't working for either a beef patty or empanada. It's still too hard. I don't know what it is. It's cooking in the booth, maybe it's cooking in the way they're executing, keeping them warm, but it's just not, it's not working. We thought it would improve. It's gotten worse. That casing on this Jamaican, Jamaican in very, very, very big quotes. Beefless patty is just destroying the whole thing. It's gone from like a empanada-like shell that was a little too crispy to hardened cardboard soaked in papaya and just kills the whole experience for me. If I gotta dig out the impossible just to have something worth eating, it ain't worth it to me. It's literally the, one of the few festival items I've ever seen. It's literally gotten worse over time. That's a one and a half out of five calls for me. I wouldn't even finish this. try the last time that we came to Flower Garden. Cheers. Oh, that's beautiful. It's like, it's like pomegranate juice, but like a light version. I'm here for this. I love this. I'm going to give this a four and a half out of five ciders. It is a tasty cider. The invasion of ciders to everything Epcot continues. So some of the pomegranate hard cider. We got the other two ciders in our last video, the drink video. Check that one out, it'll be up here in the corner, I'm sure. Ciders to everybody. Honestly, that's a good like semi-sweet. It's right in the middle for me. Like not too sweet for cider, but also not too like dry. I like this. Four and a half out of five claws. This may be the king of the ciders. For now, still to see Vegetarians, I haven't forgotten about you. A lot of you remarked on how I did not try the flatbread or asked if we tried the flatbread uh, in our original video uh, at the time, the night that we came here. I just wasn't feeling trying to squeeze the flatbread in. But we did come back for you. We have this Mediterranean flatbread with artichoke, sun-dried tomatoes, charmula veggies, and then like a crema and then a feta cheese, which is why it's not vegan now. Apparently they pre-make these. So we're even able to modify them vegan. We heard that you can, but we have yet been able to prove that you can. So at this point, you can just consider it not vegan. Vegetarians, this was all you. The crust, the flavor with the herbs, with the veggies. This flatbread is um, anything but flat when it comes to flavor. So the veggies have that right amount of pop, just amount of cream, not too much, not too little. And the feta isn't overpowering really anything else. You get a mouthful of fresh, definitely Mediterranean style veggies with the bread with a nice crust. We got pizzas that don't get crust this well. And Epcot or any other part. 
I approve. Four and a half out of five claws. Vegetarians, you need to become eat this. This one's a little more sticky than the last one that we had, but still good. So good, so tasty, so flavorful. It doesn't matter that it sticks to the paper. It's worth every bite. Five out of five, Princess Lee's item. Get you a steam bun while you still can. Now, I have always had these buns as soy pow. Or soy, yeah, soy pow. What it's called. When I lived overseas, this was like my favorite snack. Uh, when we go to the mall, I to my mother for five bucks, I'd sneak off and buy like one or two of these. While I peruse the toy section when she'd go to regular shopping. These bring me joy. No matter what form or what country they pop up in, they're all very similar. It's like a soft sweet bun with uh, some sort of like meat or stewed center. You can occasionally find vegetable ones. I'm glad that you have one plant-based meat. I need to find these in the store somewhere. I love the bun. I love that it's like a nice handheld treat. I want to see more buns. I want the bun is like a regular item in the pavilion. Screw festivals. It was a bun like in Garden House or even uh, the uh, Hilltop Cafe whose name always escapes me because the food is so terrible and not memorable. I'd give it 4.75 out of 5 claws. If they hadn't been sitting for so long and so stuck to the paper, it'd be an instant 5. So here we have the pineapple sake. I wasn't able to get this the first time. Not because there was any long line or anything, I just completely forgot when we came the first time. But I'm never gonna turn down a new sake, especially something that's pineapple flavored. Now it's not vegan, so the princess has to suffer through pineapple. Remember, she doesn't like pineapple, so that's more for me. I like this little flower petal cup. It's a nice touch. Ooh. I really much stronger pineapple flavor than I was expecting. It's like a Nagori unfiltered sake, so it's like really cloudy. It almost drinks like sake and pineapple juice. It's like a cocktail, just straight sake. And I'm here for it. 4.25 out of 5. without shrimp. I was trying to get red pepper to put in it, but apparently there's nowhere that has it. So even though it's supposed to be spicy, I was gonna make it spicy, and I don't have the ability to do that unless I walk all the way over the boardwalk, and I'm not doing that. So. These, these penne look smaller than before. Cheers. It's still really nice. The, the marinara, it's basically marinara, is watery. But the pasta is nice. I still think it's a good like little carb punch that's less food than the tot, so it's not like overpowering. And when you're in the mood for a pasta like I am, this is perfect. I would give this a four out of five pasta. It's very good. The return of this bare bones basic pasta and penne. Oh, uh, I guess penne is pasta, but tomato sauce and penne. It could use some toppings. They, it would be nice if they allowed uh, some sort of flexibility for our vegan and plant-based and vegetarian folks, but uh, we're trying here. We're trying for you guys. The sauce being so well done, it's probably like its only saving grace. The sauce is terrible. Obviously, you would just have noodles and some sort of tomato sauce. Still kind of basic. Still... Something that I can't recommend for you guys, but if you're here, your friends are eating, you want something to eat, or you're just looking for going to fill you up for a while, I guess it's there. Two and a half out of five claws. You're not getting any brownie points from me for serving people this. The 
lavender martini. This is my second time getting it. The Boyd's and Blair is vegan, so here we go. Cheers. <laughs> That's um, a little heavy on the lavender here. That's why it's a different color. It's usually a little lighter than this. They definitely poured this one heavy. I like it. It's just very um, rich in flavor. I would give it a three out of five beverages. So here we have the water half a gummy. This is an uh, IPA, an IPA. Turns out to be uh, my favorite IPA of oh, Flower and Garden this year. Half a gummy doesn't really mean anything. There's no actual gummy or gulf in it. It is a vegan beer, but the princess doesn't want to drink IPAs in the middle of Florida heat. And honestly, I can't blame her, but if it's good enough for me, then I'll risk it for the biscuit. Mmm. Mmm. That's so tasty. And it, it hurts my heart somewhere deep having to compliment an IPA in public. Yeah. Not on camera, on the internet. I'm sure somebody will throw me some shade because I say all, IPA, all, all IPAs are trash. However, when I am talking about all, all IPAs, I'm not talking about this one. It joins the hollow rates of my favorite IPAs. It's now Terrapin Luau Crunkles and Half a Gummy IPA. Five out of five quads on the bear necessities list. Get your gummy or half a gummy. Here we have the rotational menu item at the uh, Farmer's Feast booth. Um, it was a veal dish before, uh, in like a mash with some jus. This time it's seared scallops. Scallop, in this case. A single scallop with a tomato risotto. Say what you will about uh, Disney portion sizes. This is almost insulting. A single scallop, and then all it's risotto. Not it'll just be risotto with a side of scallop. Let's go ahead and dig in and give people what you came here for with the creamy tomato and my seared scallop. Is it seared? There we go. Do you have this Uncle Ben's like uh, risotto? So it's like the pre packaged risotto. Uncle Ben has sponsored most of the farmer's booth, if not all of it, this year. It's okay, rice. It's, you know, it tastes like bad rice. So the scallop is okay, it's cooked very well very tender not overcooked it's well seasoned I just wish they gave you like one more like two scallops and you can call yourself seared scallop it should really just be seared scallop but I digress it's a good flavor if you've ever wanted to try risotto and or scallops it's a good dish for you the flavor works for me it just doesn't feel like the best bang for your buck value wise uh, I would give it 3.75 out of 5 points. Sorry to close the door on you, but we've come to the end. And um, we hope you enjoyed this path circle-ish. We just got new stuff and stuff that we enjoyed around Flower and Garden. That's our April video? May video? What is this? March. One of those days. April. <laughs> she posts a video schedule. I'm just holding the camera most of the time. Uh, but I don't know what you guys think. Do you like any new items? Is there any other items I know that I still owe you? Yes, I still owe you the cauliflower. Maybe if we do a third video, I will get the honey cauliflower vegetarians. Calm down. Next month. I'm getting to you. A little bit at a time. It's a lot of food, okay? But is there anything else like this? Just do, of course, the comments will always be the place to find us. Hit the notification bell if you want to see other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. Woo! We'll see you soon. Be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if you don't comment, Bear's gonna eat himself in the garden. And then what's gonna happen? I'm just gonna lock myself behind this fake door, but you heard the girl.